When I first started out as a professional photographer, I had no idea what gear to buy. And because of that, I ended up wasting a lot of money on gear I probably shouldn't have bought and at the expense of gear I really could have used early on in my career and throughout my enti the entirety of my career. So what I did is I decided to create a step-by-step -step guide that new photographers can follow building out a kit. Step one is going to be to buy a camera body. Now I'm not a big proponent of any one brand. I really think they're all great and if you're a beginner photographer just getting into professional work and you have a kit to build out, you probably shouldn't spend too much on the latest and greatest anyway. And so what I recommend is going two generations or so back and finding what you like. Compare all the three major brands, get some hands-on experience with the cameras that are within your budget and decide from there. You know, when you eventually upgrade the market's gonna be different than it is now. The three brands will always kind of be in competition with each other and one may overtake the others briefly until a new product comes out and so forth. So get hands-on experience and go with what you like. Um, my 5D Mark III, which is now my backup body, is more than capable for shooting events or weddings. I find that it's as capable in, for the most part, with, when it comes to the results I get as my R6. My R6 is just a lot easier to use, it's a more effective tool, but with skill that you will develop with your limitations, the 5D Mark III or its equivalent from Sony or Nikon will be more than sufficient. Another option would be to get a lower end mirrorless camera. The ergonomics won't be as good, but the feature set will be a lot more advanced and you will be dealing with a more modern system overall. It may be worth it to you. Okay, step two is to get your bread and butter lens. The lens that you're going to use probably or could use might be a better phrase 90% of the time. Something that if you don't have anything else, you probably could get away with just using that lens. And that would be a 24 to 70 or a 24 to 105 or even a 24 to 120. My personal recommendation will be a 24 to 72.8. Now, as you'll see in the other steps, I'm not always going to recommend the most expensive option, but this is a lens you're likely never going to want to replace. It's used for 90% or can be used 90% of the time. And therefore, I really think you should just get what you're going to need for the duration of your career. Step three is going to be to get a flash. Now, I know we all want to skip ahead and get all the sexy purchases, the cool lenses that let us do artistic things, but unfortunately, it is going to be very likely that you will need a flash. Unless you are very specifically shooting one type of event as a side gig and you're never going to deviate from it, odds are you're gonna run into a job that just requires one. I personally think if you're on a budget that any flash with TTL will do the trick for the most part. Will it be ideal? Of course not. But you have a really big kit to build out and I don't think you want to get too hung up on a flash before you get your next lens, which you probably will need. A flash is also not too expensive and so you can just replace it down the line and you're going to want to back up anyway and when you get a backup you can just make your buy a new one that is better than what you have now and make your current flash your backup. I personally use a Canon 600EX2RT, which I literally have to read off the back of the flash every time I say it because it's a clumsy name. And I also now have a Godox V1. I personally really favor the, fla the Canon flash a lot. Um, I haven't gotten used to using this flash and that would be another video to talk about why but I think it's more than capable, and if you want a fully featured flash on a budget, I absolutely can recommend it. Step four is going to be to get one of two types of lenses, and it's really going to depend on what type of work you're mostly going to be doing. Option one will be something on the wide end of the focal length. 17 to 40, 16 to 35, 16 to 40 exists, I believe. I think now there's like a 15 to 35, Anything within that, and even a 16 millimeter prime lens, which Canon now makes, could do the job. Um, that's gonna be great if you're, you're going to be shooting maybe kids' birthday parties, smaller events indoors, and that kind of thing. If you're going to be shooting anything like a conference, maybe nonprofits, typically anytime you need to photograph speakers on stage that you can't physically get close enough to, you're going to want something like a 70 to 200. Now, when it comes to that telephoto range, 
I personally think just get a 70 to 200. It's a staple amongst wedding and event photographers for a reason. There are other options. You could get like a 100 to 400, that kind of thing, different price points. But in the end of the day, this is going to be the lens that you, you can just use forever. I have never needed a different like telephoto. I never needed a 100 to 400 or anything like that. Um, would it be nice? or give me some creative options, sure. But did I need it? Absolutely not. When it comes to getting a 2.8 or an F4, at this point, you know, if you really can only afford an F4, get the F4 and don't look back and don't worry about it. Don't look back until it's time to upgrade and we'll talk about that. But for the most part, um, getting a 2.8, I would prioritize over getting like a brand new F4. Get a used like, early version type of lens. I think that's more than sufficient. You know, a lot of these lenses, every time they upgrade, it's not going to be that noticeable. Or in other words, it's not like your client is ever gonna be like, oh wow, I can really tell you used the newest version of that lens. Um, if you can't make great images with the older version, then that's another issue. Step five is going to be really easy. It's going to be to get whatever you didn't get in step four. Um, Maybe you started with the wide because you were shooting more of like small parties and that kind of thing and you didn't need a telephoto, but you should probably get a telephoto because eventually you will need one. Or maybe the telephoto was the priority because of the type of work you're doing, but you probably will run into a situation in which you need a wider lens, either because you physically can't back up enough or maybe for those establishing shots at a big conference, that kind of thing. And at this point, you now have a fully fleshed out kit but we still have more steps to go. And that brings us to step six. Step six is now you're in the phase where you're going to start getting backups of the most important pieces of equipment. Basically anything you can't do without if it breaks. Like if I'm at a job and I'm shoot, I have a 17 to 40, 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200, and let's imagine my 70 to 200 breaks, well, first of all, it's gonna be crazy for me to buy a duplicate copy of a 70 to 200 and carry it around. That makes no sense. But I can do the job without one. What you can't do the job without is a camera. And it's really important as a professional, long-term, that you're, you have a backup of your camera amongst other things. So the, you have to remember the backup is a backup. Yeah, you might want to shoot with two cameras. You've probably seen a lot of people shoot with two cameras. I personally shoot with two cameras at times, um, but if I don't have to, I prefer not to. A backup just needs to be good enough to get the job done if you're in a real disaster and your primary camera fails on you for whatever reason. I've even toyed with getting something like a Canon M50, a tiny mirrorless camera, because with an adapter I can use my pro lenses and that's really, I think, what matters most. But personally, the way I usually, the way I solve my backup problem is that I just, whenever I upgrade cameras, my primary camera from before becomes my backup camera and then maybe my backup camera previous, I sell or whatever, I retire it. Um, I've, all, I've never kept my old cameras, I kind of regret it, but I, you guys get the idea. Step seven is gonna be really easy. Either upgrade your flash and now you have a backup, get a second copy of the flash, or if you spent a little bit more and got a great flash that would suit your needs for the next five, 10 years, you can get a cheaper flash, whatever but get a flash. You want a backup of your flash because a flash can break and if your flash breaks and you need a flash, you're in trouble. But having a second flash will be really cool because you can do a lot of really creative stuff. Personally, I've become a fan of you know the philosophy of less is more and I do a lot with the least amount of gear possible for as long as I can on a job and then I just like to like push my creativity later in the day once I have tons of coverage um, I know I've got what I needed and now I start trying more creative things and having two flash units will help with that. Step eight isn't going to be what you think. Step eight is to take a vacation and I'm really serious about it. You know, when I started out as a photographer, I struggled because I didn't fuel my professional photography with the income of a day job. It was my entire income and it's a hard living. It's really hard to start off in and I started in a recession. And so barely getting by, anytime I had any extra cash, it went into gear. 
and often the wrong gear because I didn't have a game plan to follow. So hopefully <laughs> you're gonna follow the game plan um, if it makes sense to you and you won't waste money, but you really need to celebrate achievements and I think it's really important once you have everything you absolutely need to take time off from buying gear and enjoy actually having money <laughs> to spend on yourself. I personally went to Europe for a month. It was probably the best month of my life or it, it's a contender and it was worth every penny. When I came back, I was able to then, yeah, there are more steps. I was able to move on to the next steps. Step nine is going to be to upgrade gear, mostly your camera. Now, if you bought the latest and greatest at the time of starting out, I really don't think you're going to have to go to this step for a very long time, at least five years. You know, I actually, as mentioned, I used my 5D Mark III for 10 full years. I, I loved that camera. I didn't feel like there was anything I really couldn't do with it. Um, I thought about upgrading it before a few times. I, I dabbled with the idea, mostly because of the workload I had where I felt like the, the shutter would die but the shutter never died. It just kept going and going and somehow it was so overdue, but 10 years later I upgraded my camera and I got my, my R6. At the earliest, maybe every five years you can upgrade the, a camera, but I think if you're upgrading more often than that, it, it seems really unnecessary. Unless we're talking about step, I think it's like my step 11. I'll get there. But the other thing you're going to do in step nine is start buying gear as you need it. Stop looking to buy gear, but when a job comes up or you realize there is a theme in the work you're doing in which a specific piece of equipment would help you, then you can start buying gear. A good example, let's see if I can grab it without looking. Ah, an 85 millimeter. Um, maybe you're shooting a lot of portraits on the job. This can be used also for just standard event photography coverage. I've made a video on that. Um, it was one of my favorite lenses to use for a long time, but now I just use the 50 because I don't want to carry a 50 and an 85 most of the time. But maybe you're shooting like conferences and your clients are asking if you can set up a headshot station. Having an 85 would be great. Um, so that's one option. Another one maybe you do a lot of really low light photography and you can start thinking about something like a 135 f2 or if you're on sony there's a 1.8 and canon i'm pretty sure will have a 1.8 eventually and nikon probably will have a 1.8 eventually but you guys get the idea you're going to start upgrading as necessary or buying equipment as necessary you can't always be in this mode where you're trying to acquire more stuff you know, it, it's not sustainable. It, it, this is a business and you shouldn't be spending, spending, spending. So if it's not apparent, step 10 is actually going to be to buy nothing. Just enjoy making money <laughs> and focusing on other things. You know, the more money, the more time you spend thinking about gear, the less time you're spending on getting better or marketing, you know, improving your core business. And we can easily become obsessed with gear. But step 11 is actually going to be to buy more gear. Hear me out. For very few of us, very few of us, buying gear for write-offs can make sense. And by the way, buying gear is not the only way to get a write-off, but it took me a long time in my career for it to make sense for me to want to buy gear, even if I didn't really need it um, for the write-offs. Most of my career, I was barely getting by. It took a long time to build my business out and get to a point where I felt like I was a successful photographer. Most of that time, anything I was spending on equipment just meant less income, if you think about it. You know, it's pretty fundamental. But eventually, you will get to a point where you're doing great, the work comes in, and you don't want to pay so much in taxes, and it will make sense to then, at that point, start upgrading gear just for the write-off. There you go, that's my guide to building a kit. You know, before you go, um, if this was helpful for you, please let me know in the comments. I have 15,000 plus subscribers, but you wouldn't think it. Um, I kind of forget, it's lost on me in a way because there's so many people subscribing. To me, that's a lot of people, uh, but so few of you comment. And I, I really, it fuels me when I hear that my content is helping people out on their photographic journey. It means a lot to me. Um, if you want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon page where I have bonus content, etc. cetera. Um, 
You can also get additional help from me, portfolio reviews, critiques, whatever you need. If there's something on my Patreon or you're looking for a specific type of help and it's not on my page, let me know and maybe I'll add it to Patreon or we can arrange something else and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you guys. Appreciate all of you.